This is a, you know, the paper we are talking about is about how uh, internationalization may affect firms' uh, innovation. As you see, over the past years, there are more and more Chinese firms are going global, and uh, there are many motivations. One of the motivation is to uh, acquire technology and become more innovative. So, where is the evidence of uh, you know global, whether globalization may affect firm uh, innovation? So that's the focus of this study. And uh, this is a paper we I uh, work with uh, uh, a couple of colleagues. Uh, in one from Rice, is Professor Anthea Zhang. She's now is at SIPS, and another co-author is uh, Jia Wu, who is an uh, assistant professor at the University of Macau. This paper is still a working paper. We are, you know, uh, going to submit to a strategic management journal. And uh, the paper has been presented at a recent academic management uh, academic management annual conference in Boston, and it has been selected in the best paper proceedings, and we were in, the paper was in the finalist of the uh, international division, international management division's best paper award. Several of the firm is around 1,000 firms uh, from uh, Chinese manufacturing industries, which include uh, leather goods, electronics, vehicle, and vehicle parts, and uh, electronics, and I think in general there are five broad categories in the sample. Uh, I think there are several interesting findings. Uh, number one, uh, uh, you know, in the literature there are a lot of studies which suggest you know, going global may help a firm to be innovative. And uh, with this Chinese sample, we did find something very consistent, uh, you know, which suggests uh, when firms going, glo going global, they are more likely to be innovative. Uh, more interestingly, and uh, we find you know how firms uh, over the market share between overseas market and domestic market play a very important role in firms innovation. And uh, what we found was that if a firms you know market share are equally split between overseas market and domestic market, which may prevent firms you know, to be innovative. So which is a, a very uh, you know counter intuition in many ways. Okay. And uh, another finding I think is also very interesting is, uh, uh, you know, under what conditions, okay, we can benefit from uh, uh, globalization. Okay, one of the conditions we found in this study is, if firm experience uh, very fierce competition uh, with the foreign firm in the domestic industry or in the domestic market, they are more likely to deal with uh, uh, the issues when they are facing in the global markets. Okay, and the. Uh, you know, the, I think another one I think also very interesting is about uh, uh, how diverse they are when they go into the global market. For example, you know, if you cover many different kind of uh, uh, countries when you go global, and which may create more problem for you to deal with all kind of issues. I guess the key point here is, you know, for Chinese firms in particular, they uh, they don't have you know a lot of experience in the global market. They have limited resources. And uh, it's very difficult for them to balance the competition in terms of resource, uh, resources, in terms of managerial attention across overseas market and a domestic market. I think the, the key implication here is uh, uh, in order to be innovative through globalization, you need to manage the process. And uh, you, know, you need to balance your resource allocation, your managerial attention allocation between overseas markets and the domestic market. And uh, that's a challenging issue for many firms. And if you don't do it very well, you probably will get stuck in the middle. That's why it may you know, uh, prevent you for, from being innovative.